you very much, Joanna. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, hello, my name's Clark Carlisle, and uh, I'm not uh, some arbitrarily selected Z-list ex-footballer, you know, come to talk. I'm a specifically requested Z-list ex-footballer <laughs> for, uh, for reasons that will hopefully become apparent. You know, I, I had a wonderful career um, for a, a man of moderate ability. Uh, I managed to head it and kick it and steal a living. And uh, across those 17 years of a, of a career, average career spans only seven years, so, you know, I got my money's worth. I managed to represent England in under-21s, uh, played in the Premier League. I got to several playoff finals, um, man of the match at Wembley in 2009 being my most memorable. Uh, it was a fantastic time playing football. So I start that right at the beginning, we were born in Preston, um, I was the youngest of three growing up. Um, we were what you'd call a, an underprivileged household nowadays, uh, basically we were poor, we were broke. Uh, we lived in the ghetto of, uh, of Preston. <laughs> uh, it's absolutely vital that, that we open up and talk about our mental health issues because one of the worst things that you can do when you, you lock the, those thoughts and the the inner voice inside, you, you can be lied to by it. You know, it, it tells you that you're on your own, it tells you no one cares and no one can help, and that is not the truth. We all have mental health and it goes on a continuum. And the more that we discuss it, the more that people are educated about it and are, are aware of their own journey, the more we can maintain good mental well-being as opposed to people drifting into adverse mental well-being and being in need of support. The 21st century life is the most frantic that life has ever been on earth. We are bombarded with images, with expectations, with, with, with people questioning our belief structures and our identities. The expectation to deliver at work and at home and be all of these different personas for so many different people, it's a heavy burden to carry. And one of the, the greatest problems that I had was finding and, and actually understanding who I really was in all of that. Now it's, it's taken a huge journey for me to discover that they're all different parts of me and that's what makes up the human being and I need to respect them all as different parts of me. Well first and foremost it has to be about the environment and the culture that you have in the workplace. You've got to normalise conversations about your emotional state, about your psychological state and then you have to have support mechanisms with which your, your employees, they don't feel like they're able to go to, they feel like they should go to, that they have permission to, that they will be rewarded and be a better employee for utilising these services. And that has to be endorsed from the top down. When, when I come and speak to, to companies, you know, I, I just deliver my personal experience. You know, I, I managed to, to play a really successful football career for 17 years and ostensibly life was great but no one would think that I attempted to take my own life on two separate occasions, once at 21 and once at 34. And so in 2014, I, I threw myself in front of a truck, 60 miles an hour on the A64. Yeah. I try and convey my experiences, share where I've been, what I've learned, and how now I manage myself on a daily basis. It's one of the hardest things is to envisage what you're going to do when you retire from playing football, but I've got to tell you, I'm so excited about life at the moment. Uh, I'm able to contribute on this issue, which is a burning issue for me. You know, I love it. Uh, but also, go, you know, I mean, I'm at TalkSport tonight, so going on the radio and, and trying to encourage especially men, you know, to, to find out what it is that they want to talk about and where they're going to get, get support from. But um, on top of being a dad and, uh, and a husband, my time is full. Ha, ha, ha.